Republican strategist and Trump confidant Roger Stone joins us now to share what he believes Mueller is now investigating. Roger joins us from Miami. Roger, uh, it's great to see you. These leaks keep coming out, don't they, of the Mueller investigation. Um, and I, we're going to get into a lot of it. But uh, some of it is now seeming to focus on whether Donald Trump knew about those WikiLeaks hacks or the, the, the emails that WikiLeaks had uh, of John Podesta and the DNC. And your name keeps popping up as a potential intermediary between, I guess, implied, the Trump campaign and Julian Assange. And I know you've been over this before, but this is all out there again today. Uh, Laura, this is an attempt by uh, the handmaidens of the Democratic Party and the mainstream media to reinflate the deflated Russian collusion delusion. Let's be very clear. The, uh, the truncated, doctored screenshot published by The Atlantic magazine actually proves that I had no advanced knowledge of the source or content of the WikiLeaks disclosures regarding Hillary Clinton. And I never claimed that I did. Julian Assange himself has said Roger Stone merely retweeted and followed what I was saying and tweeting. Absolutely true. And to be absolutely clear, I never discussed the WikiLeaks disclosures regarding Hillary or John Podesta, which I also had no advanced knowledge of, with candidate Donald Trump before, during, or after the election. Uh, there's just literally nothing there. Now, all this material. Uh, that was released today had been turned over to the House Intelligence Committee months ago. Uh, but this is an attempt to uh, essentially reinflate a false narrative. But don't you also see a shift happening, Roger? They were set on the collusion narrative. And they've tried, but it doesn't seem to be really going anywhere. So now you, you sense they're moving to a compromise narrative, namely, that the president reportedly must be compromised in some way by Russia, hence his soft uh, treatment of Russia. And, and I want to play something for you from your dear friend Jeffrey Tubin this morning on CNN. Let's watch. Why has Donald Trump been so favorable to Vladimir Putin? What is in it for him? A very clear possibility is business, is money, is that he has business dealings in Russia that he has wanted to cultivate. I just wrote a story in The New Yorker about um, when he brought the Miss Universe pageant mm -hmm. to, uh, to Moscow in 2013. That led directly to the meeting in Trump Tower of June, uh, in June of 2016. So now, Roger, Miss, the U Miss Universe pageant is, is brought into the equation on the Mueller investigation. Thoughts there? I mean, aside from the rank speculation by Tubin. Look, first of all, uh, if we're so pro-Putin, pro why is the president providing offensive weapons to the Ukrainians uh, over the adamant objection of the Russians? Look, Donald Trump didn't want to go to war over Syria. And Hillary Clinton was promising the deep state uh, a, an expansion of the proxy war there. Uh, if you look at Syria, Assad uh, finances Hezbollah and Hamas, propped up by the Russians. On the other side, you have ISIS and a thousand other radical groups. We have no friends here. Donald Trump does not want to spend borrowed American money or American lives going to war with Russia over Syria, a no-fly zone, as favored by Hillary Clinton and John McCain, would have been an invitation for World War III. So Donald Trump was the peace candidate in the last election. He has no illusions about Russia or the corruption of the Russian system or the fact that Putin's a bad guy. But they have thermonuclear weapons, Laura. Perhaps we should be talking to them. And, and the, the idea that Trump is somehow softer on the Russians than Obama was. I mean, Obama's big push was December 2016. Okay, we're going to kick you know, all these Russian officials out of the country. But they were trying to do the reset. You know, they, you know, they had that sweetheart deal with Bill Clinton and while Hillary was Secretary of State, we did Uranium One. So the, I think the argument is clear that if anyone was soft on Russia, it was Obama. It wasn't Trump, it was Obama who was soft. Well, the mainstream media is absolutely right about the fact that there was a major party candidate whose top aides were in bed with the oligarchs around Vladimir Putin. There was one candidate whose foundation was taking millions of dollars from Russian interests. That would be Hillary Rodham Clinton. The 
Panama Papers, published in January of 2016, exposed the Podesta brothers' dealings, shady dealings in Russia, the gas deal, the uranium deal, the banking deal. This is all a matter of public record. So she was the candidate in bed with Putin, not Donald Trump. And by the way, Roger, I know you'll love this story. This just crossed by Axios. Jeff Sessions is dining at a very high-profile restaurant tonight with Rod Rosenstein, his deputy, and the Solicitor General, Noel Francisco. And this is being interpreted as a big show of force, DOJ, in the face of the Trump uh, tweet this morning. Your thoughts? Look, uh, Rod Rosenstein approved the use of the phony Russian dossier as the legal rationale for surveillance of the Republican candidate for president. Rod Rosenstein should be terminated immediately. He has a conflict of interest in the appointment of Robert Mueller, who gave him his first job in public service. He's up to his neck in Uranium One as the U.S. attorney. Rosenstein must go first. Then, sadly, Jeff Sessions should go next. All right, Roger, thanks so much. And we've got big news from Sanctuary State.